morning as we go to the chitas of today. Today is Thursday, which is the fifth reading in the portion of Kedoshim. And it's in the book of Leviticus, Pasha, the book of Leviticus, chapter 20, verse number one. God spoke to Moshe saying, verse number two, to the Jewish people, the children of Israel, you shall say, Ish, Ish, any man, from the Jewish nation, and from the stranger, from the convert that lives with the Jews, who will give his offsprings to the Moilech. Moilech was a certain kind of a deity at those days. That person should be surely be put to death. The people of the land, the people of the land shall stone him with a with stones. So now she says, this, even though we mentioned this already, the Torah mentions already, meaning enumerates the following punishment for warning that were given in chapter 18. So in chapter 18, it mentions the punish, the warning over here is the punishment for a person that gives over his child to the Melech. He used to, the Melech we mentioned before was a deity, he used to walk the children to the fire. Most humans with Bezdin by court. If the, if the court has no power, that's what the Torah continue, continues that the people should do. Amaretz. What means Amad is this may render either the people of the earth or the people of the land as follows the people whose sake the earth was created, the people who are destined to possess the land of Israel through observance of this commandment that's called Amad. The people care about the land. Anina Sati, verse number three, Vanina Ethan is Panabi Ish, and I will also set my attention upon this man. Oh, I'll cut him off from the midst of his people because he gave of his offsprings to this Melech which he defiles my, 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 my sanctuary and to profane my holy name. So now she says again when it says Panim and Sati Panai means that in my leisure I will turn aside from all my affairs to occupy myself with him. But Ish, so now she says, comes to teach us, this is talking about a, a singular person, but not a community. If the entire community is, if the entire community, this whole city goes, a community goes and does such a thing, they don't have the same law. So now she says, because he's given his offspring to the Melech, are not this phrase here and the phrase in the next verse when he, he gives the offspring to the Melech superfluous? However, since scripture says, there shall not be found amongst you anyone who passes his son and daughter through the fire, how do we know that the law applies as well to a son of a son, a son's son, or his daughter's son? Scripture therefore says, because he gives all his offsprings to the Melech. And how do we know that the law applies to even to one's illegitimate offspring that came about through an illegitimate relationship? Scripture, therefore, the Torah says, when he gives of his offspring, so again, the Torah completes, so in any kind of situation, if you give your child to the Moila, you, you've done a, you've done a, a terrible Aveda, and, you're, and, you're, and, you're, and, you're, and the Torah gives you the opposite of life. The man Timus Mikdashi, because they have impurified my holy place. It's Knesset Israel. Watch my holy place, the congregation of Israel. Shem Mekudashli, which the Jewish people are holy to me. And that's why it says, the Torah says, Kalashim Ale Yechalas Mikdashi should not profane something that is holy. So why would the Jewish people profane something that is holy? Verse number four. The people of the land will ignore that man. 
and people say, I see no evil, do no, I don't see anything. When a person who does such a thing, to give his children to such a kind of a situation, the people are going to say, I'm not, I'm not getting involved. So that's what Ashi says. Why did it say double expression of ignoring? The double expression intimates that if you ignore one matter, even one sin, you will begin to ignore many matters. That's what happens. And if the small Sanhedrin of 22 judges ignore the matter, eventually the great Sanhedrin of 71 judges and Jews will ignore that matter. So if you suddenly just say, I don't care, I'm not getting involved, it's not important to me, ultimately, bigger things won't be important to you. Verse number five. David says, if you think that, uh, that because you're not going to do something, I'm not going to do something, I will do something. I will, take, I will put my, my attention upon this man, upon his family. And I'll cut him off. And all those that are straight after him. To go after this deity. Mekedav Amam from the this from the, from the, from the Jewish nation. So Rashi says Rab Shim the Gemara brings that Rashi brings down the Gemara. Rab Shim says in what ways the family sin that they should be punished. However, this teaches us that there is no family in which there's an unfair tax collector which may not be regarded as consistent entirely tax collectors. If, they, if there's evil in the family, then the family is covering up on them. So if you have an unfair tax collector, that suddenly the family doesn't know. <laughs> Nobody knew that he had a Ponzi screen. Meanwhile, everybody's living off of his success, off his illegal success. So it's not a true thing. Somebody knew, and they didn't stop him. So that's what the Torah says. If you're gonna, if you, if mishtat mishpat, if you have an evil person, is doing something evil, the family knows they're covering up on him. Yechidati, I say, why is it stated? It already says. God says, I'll cut him off because Scripture says, I will set my attention upon that man and upon his family. One might think that his entire family is included in the punishment of a decision. Scripture says, I'll cut him off. <coughs> so it underlines that it's only the person who sins will get the concept of cutis. The family will be punished other ways, but the person that sinned is gets cutis. That's why you have the Torah says the family, and then it says, I'll cut him off. So now she says, this law is not only the melech, this phrase comes to include in this penalty any other pagan deity that one worships in this matter, even though it's not the mode of worship. Verse number six. And so to a person that goes to Avis and Yudayna, which we mentioned before, Avis and Yudayna are different kinds of, uh, we go to, uh, to people that tell us what, what the dead are, are, are they, have a, they have this connection to the dead. And they go to find out either, either through uh, the guy puts a bone underneath his armpit or a bone in his, his mouth. Here the Torah tells us the punishment. You see, in general, we learn that uh, there's a concept that the Torah does not punish somebody if he does not warn. He has to be warned. And we see it in the Torah itself. We have the warning in the previous, what we learned previously. And now we have the punishment. And the Gavish says, I'll put my, 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 my face again into that person. I'll cut him off from the Jewish nation. And this is all for one reason. As the verse says in text number seven. And you shall sanctify yourself. You shall be holy. Because I am God, your God. So now she says, what is the meaning over here of holiness? Zu precious 
This comes to tell us that a Jew needs to separate himself from any kind of idol worship. Any kind of idol worship is prohibited by a Jew. And that completes the Chumash of today. We now go to the Tanya of the day. And the Tanya of the day is a chapter, we start chapter 46 of Tanya. The Alter Rebbe is trying to tell us and give us the, uh, the capability for a Yid, for a Jew, to do Teirah L'Shema, to do Teirah Mitzvah L'Shema, not only for thus the sake of, you know, a robot, to dust blind faith, but a Jew should do Teirah L'Shema, he should do for the sake of God, and through that, he should awaken up his Avas Hashem and Yiras Hashem, she awaken up the love of God and the fear of God within him. And that's all we're trying to accomplish. So the Alter Rebbe said, he could do it through, through even thought, you know, thinking about that God is his father and God is his essence. And then the Alter Rebbe ended off yesterday that we should do it through the concept of, uh, of Rachmanus. We shall have mercy. We shall waken up a mercy upon our soul and upon God that is the essence of our soul. And now the Alter Rebbe is going to give us another way. Because by the Alter Rebbe, it's important that we awaken up our, our, our love to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It shouldn't be something that's just, it's part of us. In the, it's our instincts, it's our essence. It needs to be something that is awoken up through our seichel, through our intellect that we have the capability to awaken up this Ava. It needs to be done that. As the Alter Rebbe says, Zekal Adam. This is the whole purpose of man, that we serve God through our mind, and we serve God, not that we have a service of God, which does, that's who we are, but that we have our service of HaKadosh Baruch. So the Alter Rebbe says, Yesh Eiderach Yeshara, there's yet another way Another straight way, meaning a simple and straightforward that is that is that is that is applicable to every everybody. And it's and after that, but the matter is very close to everybody. To arouse and kindle the light of love. That's implanted and, 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 and is concealed within his heart. There is another way to awaken up this hidden love. And the way is, this love is already found in the heart of every Jew. As we mentioned before, this love is found in the heart of every Jew. In concealed state, right? Avu Musuteres, it's a hidden love. So utilizing the, the approach about to be described makes it very simple for every Jew to reveal and actualize it. And how do we do it? So that should be able, uh, uh, it, it, that it shines forth in an intense light, like a flaming fire in the conscience of his heart and mind. It ultimately enables the person to surrender his soul to God. And his body, and everything he has. Being with all his heart and his all his soul and his all might, with boundless devotion of his soul. From the depth of his heart, with truth, with in truth. Right. And especially when one does it in a time when he says the Shema and the blessings of the Shema, which is by it as will be explained. Because we know that the, the Chazal, the sages, established that the pinnacle of, 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 of Kabbalah Sel, the pinnacle of connection to God, where Jew expresses this concept is in the Shema. When we say, Hero Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one of our hafta, and I love God. Bechol with all my heart, Bechol with all my soul, Bechol with everything I have. 
That's the expression that a Jew says to God, I love you with everything that I am. How do we come to that level? How do we come not to just say it, but actually feel it? And that's really what we need to accomplish. It's not just to say, I love you, God, with all my I. I should actually feel it. I should feel it in my mind, at least, that I truly love God with all my heart, with all my soul, and everything that I am. Who in the Alta Rebbe says, this is the way to do it. He shall put to his heart what the verse says. Just like water mirrors the face to the face, Cain leva Adam el Adam. So too is the heart of man to man. That's the that's a verse. Kemayim upon it's a verse in I think Mishle that the verse says that a dust like the face reflects the, the the water. When you look into the water, you see the reflection of your face. So too is the heart of man to man. Peter is what is the meaning of the verse? There's many meanings to this verse. This means that in the case, the likeness of the feature of the face, which man presents in the water, the identical face is back to him in the water, right? He looks in the water. He sees the identical of his face. That image mirrors not only the person's external features, but also the nuances of the facial expressions. He can look, it's like looking in a mirror. So when you look in the mirror, you see not only your face, you see even the expressions of your face. If you're happy, if you're sad, and thus revealing not only his physical state, but his mental state as well. The verse says, just like the water, or a mirror, same thing, reflects the face of another person, and the person can see his own reflection. Not only the outer reflection, but the inner reflection, so too, a person's heart that is connected to another person's heart, reflects one another, the Abish to made, that we reflect one another. If we care about each other, not only can we see each other, we can feel each other. We can feel another person's pain. We can feel when the other person is happy, when the other person is sad. The more we care about somebody else, the more that our hearts are reflecting one another, the more we have an inner connection. It's not just an outer connection that we just see each other. The more we feel each other, the Abish to made it that way. That our hearts, even though I have my leg and you have your leg, you have your heart and I have my heart. But if we, our hearts, are face to face, so to say, our hearts have a connection one to other, I can feel your pain. I look at you and I see that it's a bad day. Or I look at you and I feel that you're having a good day. So what does that mean? The more we love each other, the more we have a love for one another and two people. The more you have a love, you create a love. Now, what does that create? That creates a bond with one another. We create a bond between each other. So between two people that love each other, the more we have this creation, the more we have this bond with one and one another, the more we create a love to one another. And not only does my love create, create a love to you, but it actually creates that you love me. And it's a two-way street. So if I show love to you, because I care about you, you're ultimately going to show love to me. That's, in essence, what the verse is saying. Thus, like the face reflects the face, so to the heart reflects the heart. If I, my heart, cares about your heart, your heart will start caring about my heart. 
which will ultimately bring that we will love each other. So even the love harbored in one's heart arouses and reflects love in another. That's the power of love. That's the power of Ava. In essence, the verse is saying, the power of Ava, it makes Ava. Ava is not only a power that for myself, oh, that I'm a lover, I'm a person who has Ava. If I'm a person that has Ava, that doesn't create an Ava in something else, somebody else, then it's something is wrong because it's an emotional thing. An emotion needs to evoke an emotion. If it doesn't, then something's wrong with my emotion. And that's why if my Ava is not awakening your Ava, then it's something wrong not with your Ava, it's something wrong with my Ava. And therefore I need to work on, on my Ava. I need to be able to work on creating a better Ava to you. Because the verse in essence says that the Avishta made it that way. Just like that God made that my face reflects from the water or from a mirror. That's what happens. And not only my face reflects, my emotions reflect from that aspect. So too my heart reflects your heart. And if I had true Abba to you, you have to, you would ultimately have Abba to me. That's the way it is. Especially one sees his friend's love for him. If I see your love to me, it's going to awaken up within me, love to you. That is the concept of Abba. That's the way it's done. So that's the way it's, that's the way it's, the situation works. So therefore, power of love, there's nothing greater than the power of Abba. And we need to all work on our Abba. We need to all work on our love. It shouldn't be superficial. It shouldn't be just statements. It should be something that's real. That my Ava is real. I have truly love for you. I truly care about you. I am worried about you. I am thinking about you. And I need to reflect that. Just know to, to say that I, I love you is not enough. I need to have, I need to reveal this Ava, this true Ava. My, my heart needs to reflect to your heart. Another expression, but am I Yitzvah Alev? Nechnosim Alev. But I would always say that expression. Things that come out from the heart, go to the heart. Meaning, and the Rebbe would say, what is the meaning? The meaning is that if it really comes out of my heart, it would reach your heart. The problem is, it's not coming out of my heart. It's coming out of my mind. And mind to mind doesn't work. It's heart to heart that works. Things have to come out of my heart. Things come out of my heart because I really care about you, because I really want to make a connection to you, because I really want to have a relationship with you. It would automatically create, a you would automatically feel it, and you would automatically have a creation relationship to me. And that's, with that concludes the time of today. So um, we'll have to wait to what the Alter Rebbe wants to bring out in Mitzvah tomorrow. Today is the fourth day of the month which starts on chapter 23 to chapter 28. Chapter 23 to chapter 28, and you would do the chitas of the day. I want to wish you all a beautiful and happy and healthy day. I want you to invite you all to a beautiful sikh of the Rebbe um, uh, today at 10 a.m. on the portion of the week, which actually... The Rebbe, the Sikha today, the, 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 the Rebbe's teaching today is on Abbas Yisrael, because actually this week's portion, we, we learned, Torah says, kamecha, you shall love thy neighbor as you love yourself. Now she says, Kiva, this is a very important principle of Torah. So the Sikha is on that verse, beautiful Sikha of the Rebbe, teaches us a very powerful lesson on how to love somebody else. And um, that's at 10 a.m. either at Chabad or on Zoom or on Facebook, TorahDirect.com. I wish you all a beautiful, happy, wonderful, phenomenal day. God bless you all. See you, Mitchem, tomorrow at 8 a.m.
and we'll continue the chitas of the day. Thank you, Rabbi.